What is up everyone? So today we're going to put the final touches on the flooring and what that's going to entail is the grout. Okay, so before you pick any grout, what I recommend you doing is looking at whatever tile you purchase, they should have a display where they took a picture of a final or finished flooring with your tile and the grout that they recommend. Once you see that, determine if you like it or not, whether or not you need to go darker or lighter. It's up to you. You want to go to Home Depot or Lowe's or wherever you're buying your stuff from and make sure they have uh, the difference in shade that you want uh, because a lot of them will only carry like a handful of different shades on hand and then the other stuff has to be special ordered. Uh, so keep that in mind when looking for grout is I recommend checking out the picture of uh, the tile you purchase first and then going from there. So before we uh, grout in this episode, we found out that this tile here is a problem. Uh, we had to pull it out because there was too much water on it. And uh, it's due to this leak here. So basically what happened was all the water was going down and keeping the water moist, as you can see on there. But what we did was we scraped it up chiseled out the hard edges, the ones that were dry, um, with the pry bar and also a spatula or a putty knife. Um, and then now what we're gonna do is put a bucket underneath this or plug it and uh, replace this one. It's gonna be similar to how all the other ones were replaced, so it's not that hard. Um, and we gotta do that and then we'll start mortaring or we're gonna start grouting the other side and then work our way this way and hopefully that's dry by then. So before you lay any of the grout down, uh, what you need to do is scrape the lines all over, uh, make sure there's no mortar sticking up higher than the tile. Uh, you could use a rotary tool, uh, the one that goes on the oscillator or you could buy a scraper for the mortar or you could just use a spatula or something hard uh, where you could slide in the cracks, like a, uh, the, those things that are used to knock out tile. Uh, you could use that on end and slide it through, but you wanna make sure you get all that lower. And then what you need to do is make sure you clean up the, all the tile, get all the dirt off the ground, because if you don't, that dirt is gonna transfer into your grout and uh, change its color or its hue um, so you want to make sure all of it's clean uh, before doing any of it, okay? To lay the grout down, you're going to need a few items. Uh, first thing you need is, of course, to buy sponges. The large ones are what you're going to uh, want to buy. So once you lay the grout down, this kind of wipes it up and smooths everything out, okay? You're going to need two buckets, one to rinse, uh, one to dip in, and then the other one to rinse it off or you know what or you could do it all in one and then have the other one ready to rock and roll uh, so i recommend two uh all i did was use the mortar buckets so when you're applying the mortar um, and you're done with the bucket make sure you keep it sealed to keep everything kind of tacky uh, and then once you're done using the mortar out of one bucket you could clean it out and use them for the grout okay so if you don't have buckets uh, you might have to buy some if you decided not to do uh, what I recommended. Um, then you pick your grout, whatever color you want. I got two of these. Hopefully that's enough to do this whole house. We'll see as we go. You're gonna need this rubberized uh, grout uh, spreader. And what this does is once you apply the grout, you scoop it out, you paste it on there, and then you smear it. Um, and then you take the sponge and wipe it off to smooth it out. I have seen people use uh, squeegees like this, so this might be a little bit better. We'll see. Uh, I don't know yet. So I'm gonna try to use this, scrape it. Um, this is from 3M, okay? And then this is what they, what everybody uses in the trade. Uh, I have seen on YouTube a guy actually used something similar to this and this. It's like a rubberized uh, foam padded squeegee, but on a stick and maybe more, more so of a, a window squeegee. So he put it on a stick and he was able to stand up and do this stuff. 
um, which is probably smart if you uh, you know are doing this as a trade but if you're not you might want to get more personal with it just because you want to make sure the grout goes all the way down in there so they have a uh, pre-mixed uh, grout and they also have a uh, grout that you mix yourself I recommend getting the pre-mixed grout if you haven't mixed anything uh, yourself and the reason for that is because if you put too much uh, moisture in it what ends up happening is your grout won't be consistently colored uh, as you apply the grout it might turn white in certain areas that's also another reason why you want to uh, dip your sponge in there and wring it out because if you apply too much water onto your grout it might have like a dark and light color so some of the grout might come out like this this is a mortar but just an example some of the grout might turn white just because there's too much uh, moisture in it so after peeling this off of this this is hinged so this stays on and it, this one here in particular actually comes with a sponge i wasn't aware of that uh, but this is what people use uh, i guess you could use that too and as you can see it's only halfway full so you only have this much uh grout in there so i feel like they kind of gypped us this grout was about 50 dollars a tub okay i do like how this is just because you could always put your sponge right there fits nicely it closes set your sponge on top if you're done so that's pretty neat but i feel like for 50 bucks they gypped us all right so what you want to do is scoop up some of this grout on here uh more is better just because it's easier to uh, flow so you could do it this way apply it like that or you could do it where you're just I like to put my hand in here and scrape this whole thing so just apply it like that smear it all over the place get some more apply it smear it all the way down it's like uh, you're gonna a whole bunch in here so don't be afraid to kind of manipulate it in it's almost like a sand texture so it's kind of gritty and you're just going to keep going all the way down and applying as much as you can forcing it into the cracks stuff like this you want to come back around okay scrape up as much as you can like this and then reapply it in different areas So if you're running out, it's going to start looking like that and give you voids. Same thing with this. So you want to make sure you always have a lot being pressed down into the crack. And then take it back, go back this way, go back that way, just because the tiles aren't going to be perfectly level. And as you do all that, then what you want to do is wet your sponge. So you want to soak your sponge. I already did it once, but soak it. Squeeze out, wring it all out. Just because you don't want to apply any extra moisture onto this grout since it's already wet. And then you want to clean it. So you go like this, or you could go like this with it. So that's one side, turn it, use the other side to give it a smooth finish. Then turn the whole thing, new uh, clean in. Just go all the way down like that. Flip it, new clean side, and then you finished it out. Uh, for the rest of these tiles, to make sure that there's no more uh, grout on them, you can always clean this off too 
first before you decide to do your grout lines. Uh, bring this out and then do your grout lines. Just because you don't want none of that grout to settle on the tile and dry up either. Okay, so then you just go and wring it out again and repeat the process uh, for the other ones. If you have any voids, you can re-add to it. But if you look closely up here, you'll see that over here, it's real textured. And then over here, it's super smooth. Just because we haven't hit this one with the wet sponge. Uh, some people also will tell you, some professionals will tell you only one swipe, turn it, one swipe, flip it around, one swipe, you know, just so that way you don't add any uh, dirt and debris back into your uh, ground lines. But it also gives you a nice little uh, bevel uh, edge so your grout's not sticking up. It makes it all smooth. So if you look right here, you'll see more texture. So right there, it's all textured and then over here smooth. But if I go like this, it smooths it out. So I find that this little uh, squeegee that has a silicone uh, end on it is actually working better than that other one that's rubber. Because all I do is just push it into the cracks and I can slide it around easier and uh, everything stays in one spot. And it's easier to get in the bucket, it's easier to manipulate on here, it's easier to control it down the line rather than you know spreading it everywhere. So I feel like this is a great option. Uh, it'd probably be nicer if it was maybe a little bit wider. Maybe so that way you scoop it in from this way and not necessarily this way and this way. Or you could just scoop it up this way and it'll cover more ground here. We just finished up one tub and we were able to do, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine tiles wide. And then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight tiles in length are uh, seven and a half because those are like halves uh, in length. And these are 17 and three quarter by 17 and three quarter. So I was able to do this area here with one bucket. So then that kind of gives you an idea of what one of these containers is capable of doing. So I was able to get pretty good at using this. Um, so what I, I end up doing is I go in here, scoop some up like this, and then I lay it down like this in the cracks and then just go all the way down and then slide it across and then relay it back down. And then I got a little bit on here still. So then I go this way and then slide it across again. And then just keep doing that. And it lays down a pretty decent line uh, without having, you know, this uh, grout all over your tile. So what we notice when laying the grout down is uh, there's a film left behind. So you need to make sure you really scrub the tile off. Maybe that's what's on the sponge, uh, the soap for the sponge. Maybe it's to get that film off. And that's why I like this little squeegee because it keeps it all in a row so you don't have to scrub any, like, uh, you don't have to scrub as much off the tile. Um, but as I'm moving my way this way, then another person will come in and be wiping it off. So we move uh, together all the way down. And then once we get to the end, then I start another row here and start this way. And then they're over here and then they'll shift over here. And then we'll both move together again as I'm making my way across this way. So uh, I advise you to do that. So that way it doesn't dry as fast onto the tile. After doing this for a while now, um, one thing I picked up on is how to clean. Um, a lot of people say once you put the grout on, then you wipe it, you flip it over, wipe it again, and then turn your thing, wipe it, and then turn it around and wipe it. Uh, so you get four uses out of your sponge. And the reason for that is because when you're doing it, what ends up happening is as you smear it, the thin film that smears with it starts tacking up a lot faster just because it's thinner. And um, 
you're supposed to probably do about one square at a time. So you grout one square, then you clean it all up, and then you grout another square and clean it all up. Um, it takes a long time if you're only one person. And um, what I ended up doing is um, grouting a few squares and then taking my sponge and uh, wetting it and then uh, drying it out so there's no water oozing out, but it's moist. And I just been cleaning the tile off real quick, cleaning the tile off real quick and then squeezing it out, cleaning it. And then I just been doing the circular motions like this until I feel like it gets a little bit gritty. Then I'll flip it over and do it again. Um, I believe that's gonna be frowned upon in the tile community just because when it's starting to get gritty, you're gonna have gritty um, lines in your in your grout so it's going to have a gritty texture to it but like i said once i'm done i'll flip it over and do it again and then i'll wring this out and then go back over it to give it a smooth texture um, i feel like cleaning this off is a lot faster than be doing uh, for you to do one swipe flip it over one swipe turn it around one swipe turn it around and one swipe and then having to wring this out it's just it takes a lot because that thin film is hard to get off so you'll have to come up and touch it up like that and like that uh, just because one swipe isn't going to clean it um, it dries pretty quickly uh, that thin film just from your trial or your uh, whatever you have your squeegee when it goes the width of this too so you put it on like this but you're going to have some overspill in between so like if i go like that as you can see that clear stuff it's an overspill, but when you go this way, it does the same thing. And this stuff dries pretty quick because it's so thin of a film. It's, uh, it's real easy to dry. And so it takes a little bit of elbow grease to get it out. So that's why I try to clean the tile first and then get like all the overlapping stuff to the best of my ability, clean this out, and then uh, do a circular motion to kind of keep it moist as I'm going around and then do a final cleaning. So about three or four times, but I do it fast instead of doing it real slow and then having to flip it and then do it again. Uh, just my personal preference. And uh, I mean, the finish that I get is pretty decent. Uh, there's really no compromise in it. So to me, it's a lot faster. To others, they might frown upon it. So keep that in mind, uh, but it is what it is. Like I said, I'm a DIYer. I do it myself and uh, do it to the best of my ability to get it done uh, quick and easily uh, just because I don't do this as a profession. So what I end up doing is applying it like such. So this is, this is my technique that kind of developed to get this a little bit more cleaner and not have to uh, waste as much grout. So make sure this stays moist start drying out add a little bit of water to it a little bit goes a long way so I'll apply it like this and then I'll come back this way and apply it the opposite way just so that way it tucks up underneath those chamfers on the tile and then what I'll do in this intersection spot is I'll kind of go a little bit further than what I have to just because I know when I start scrubbing or uh, wiping the uh, I'm gonna kind of go into this and I don't want water to really go underneath this or moisture. I want to keep it up all up on top. So then after I go like this and apply it in here, I'll take this and slide it across the top just to kind of get most of the thin film out. As you can see, it piles up, wipe it off in there. And then I'll knock this off so it doesn't dry off. Dry off on the very top it'll be a thin film and you don't want it to dry off. And then I'll take this and go like that. And then kind of get, as you can see, a little bit of extra. Then what I'll do is take my soap uh, sponge here and I'll wring it out. I'll wring it out so there's really no water squeezing out, okay? Then I'll take this, go in a circle pattern like such get all that uh, real thin film up as you can see it's transferred over there and then I'll do it again with this in 
the opposite side after I flipped it. Get it on here, and then I'll bring this up and do it one last time, just to make sure I get a nice finish and uh, finish it out like such. But usually I'm doing two squares, so a lot of this moisture that I pick up kind of goes over into this area, and it doesn't leave this much water left over. So I'll do two, and then basically it'll dry. It'll dry to a nice finish. So over here, have a little bit of mess up uh, from wind drying the bucket. The corner of these buckets will dig into your grout if you're not paying attention. So what I do is I'll just go right back over it. Scoop this up. This might even be frowned upon. It might be contamination, but oh well. And then I'll take this over it and finish it off. If you have a higher tile, like this one's higher than this one, if you go like this, you'll skip over the edge. Um, so what I would do, or what I'd recommend, is going this way, packing it in, and then coming back this way to kind of tuck it up under here so you get a gradual transition. The reason why this one's up is probably because the floor wasn't level. There's probably some uh, rough uh, like rough cement underneath it that kind of held it up higher than the others. Um, so that could have been part of the cause. And then that's it. So that's how I lay it. And as you can see, it's already drying over here. It's drying brown. It's not drying this white color. And uh, I usually try to do two tiles at a time just so I can go a little bit faster and not have to clean this as much. So let me show you how some of the professionals recommend it apply this stuff, so, or squeegee it, clean it, whatever you want to call it. So after you apply this, this is where we're kind of different in the way we apply the application for cleaning and smoothing and stuff like that. Um, a lot of people like to use that big old rubber pad I showed you earlier. Uh, I don't really like that. To me, it's not as precise. This squeegee used to actually be a lot more pointy at the tip, and from using it, it actually dulled and became uh, more blunt at the end just because the grit kind of eats away on it. From you doing this, cleaning up the extra. So I recommend if you're getting a squeegee, get one that's pretty tough like this green one, or uh, buy a few. Uh, the extra stuff that falls off, that curls up, that's a little bit harder. I just throw it down in the cracks just to help uh, fill the void so we don't waste all of it. So it's a little bit rough here, and what they recommend doing is grabbing your sponge, bringing it all the way out, Making one swipe like that, turning it, one swipe, turning it. Now uh, I got these two sides, one swipe, turn it, one swipe, and that's it. As you can see, there's a lot less on here, but just to get this one done, it took me, you know, two swipes, two swipes, and there's still some texture here, as you can see right here. Look at my pinky just picks up it doesn't pick up as much so now I gotta go back through and clean this up like this like this and then I finished off this little section here now I gotta wring it out and do the same for this whereas the way I I kind of do it is I use one whole side to get this roughed out so to pick up all the rough uh, loose ends so that way there's not a lot in here and then I'll take the clean end and then I'll give it a soft brush over just to give it a nice finish and then that cleans it out. So I use one side to get all the gritty stuff up and then I use the other side to get the smooth finish and then I'll bring it out. I might even do it again if I feel like it needs to but it seems like one side getting the rough stuff up 
and then the uh, new site to smooth it out kind of does the job uh, to give me a nice finish. Like I said, depends on who you ask to do this. A professional, uh, I notice they sometimes just use this and they throw a whole bunch on and they're just swiping it like this, keeping this all wet and just keep going and moving it. And it's just keeping all that loose debris on here uh, just so that, that way they don't have a lot of cleanup. And that's good if you know how to do it. Uh, but like I said, they keep it super wet, whereas the stuff that's already pre-mixed, it starts drying out. So you gotta keep applying water to it every now and then uh, just to keep it nice. But yeah, the professionals, they'll be going like this and scraping it, smearing it all over, scraping it. Uh, there's videos on it, but I'm not that handy with something like this. Uh, this kind of keeps everything in one area for me. And then, like I said, using this sponge helps clean everything up without having to do too much effort and I get a decent finish. So if you're looking for professional work, I mean, this is, I think this is an A in my book, but a professional might consider it a B. Uh, but if you look at professional tiling jobs, what ends up happening is their lines aren't straight. They don't use the spacers. So, I mean, you know, they're, their grading system on being perfect might be a little bit more lax just because they're laying so much tile out in a job, you know, if they're doing homes, they might be laying out, you know, uh, 200, two, 300 homes, you know, they don't have time to sit there and put spacers. So, you know, when, when someone comes around and looks at the job I did, they might say, oh, this is fantastic. And a professional might come in and be like, why'd you spend so much time on it, you know? Whereas they would lay the tiles out and then space the tiles by eye and by alignment of the first tiles that they lay down. So it's all, uh, I say it all in the eyes of the beholder. Uh, do whatever works for you and just get the job done. And as long as it looks nice to you, that's all that counts because you're going to be living in the knowledge. This is an example of um, doing a circular motion when using the sponge. And then over here, this is the example of using uh, what's recommended and using one side per swipe. As you can see, there's really no difference. And then this is mortar sticking out just because, like I said, uh, you're supposed to knock off the high ends or else it'll protrude out. Uh, so that's a clear example of what not to leave behind. Because like I, I mentioned earlier, when you use the sponge, it gives it a con concave uh, finish between the tile and the grout, just because it it leaves like a little swoop in between. And then this is the difference in color. As you can see, it's already dirty. So this is actual dirt uh, from the dust on the refrigerator. If you went lighter, that's another reason why not to go too light. It's because it already gets dirty too quick. And as you can see the difference in color. So the left side is a little bit more brown. It doesn't show up as brown as what it is in real life. And the right side is a white. And the white side, our right side is actually a little bit truer to color as far as uh, what you see in person. That's what you actually see but this is a little bit more brown uh, in person. If you're interested in knowing what tile I got, um, so this is the alabaster sands color right here, and it's SD91, 18 by 18 floor, uh, which is actually 17 and three quarter by 17 and three quarter. Um, and yeah, I think it's SD91, it's the code and it's Alabaster Sands is the name of it, if you're interested in maybe uh, using this color as well. And then for the grout, I'll show you what that, um, what I end up choosing for that, and uh, also where I messed up. Okay, so I screwed up in picking out the grout. So originally what we did was we thought one bucket was gonna be enough for this, and what I ended up doing is picking this up with the grout 
and we underestimated how much we're gonna actually need. Of course, we didn't calculate any of that stuff. But the first one we picked up was bone. It's this color. And then about a month and a half later, because you know we laid the tile, it takes a while to lay that tile. Um, there was three colors options. There was a, a lighter color than this, there was the bone, and then there was a darker color, which was mocha. So we picked the middle color. The second time I went to Lowe's, uh, I ended up picking up this one here, Chamois. And the reason why I picked up this one was because there was this color, bone, chamois, and the mocha. So I recall us picking up the, the middle color, or the middle shade, and that's why I picked up this. Well, in doing so, we laid this one down first, not even realizing it, and then we laid this one down. And I'll show you what that looks like right now, but when doing so, I always thought after I laid it down, it looked white or a lot lighter. Um, and that being said, I thought it was because the water, because the water turned milky, um, just because the soap and then also the mortar mixed with it, or the grout mixed with the soap and the water kind of turned a milky color. And I thought the color was being diluted um, as we we're wiping it, but turns out, picked up two different colors and the way we found out was because last night we ended up going uh, back over there to pick up two more tubs of this to finish out the house so it would have took four tubs in total and realizing they actually had four options they had the lighter color they had this color they had this color they had a darker color and then the mocha and um, I was like oh well I recorded this already and I noticed the bone was one of the options but I was like, it doesn't look this light in the, the area that dried the first time. And so that led me to look at my earlier video where I recorded. And turns out I, I captured this color as well. And uh, I kind of deciphered that, you know, we picked up two of the wrong colors. Luckily I recorded uh, before and after and realized, you know, we have two different colors instead of buying more of this which I'm thankful for that we didn't buy more of this because I like this color a little bit better. You come over and you see this is the bone and this is the chamois. Uh, the chamois isn't this dark in person. It's a little bit lighter, more of a tan color, whereas this is like a, a white tan. And the reason why I'm glad we, we end up messing up and buying the darker color is because it gave us the ability to see the difference in shade um, if we went with this one, it would have looked fine, but it looks more like a cement color. And if you're, uh, you know, if you have a high traffic area, that cement color will end up uh, staining and getting dirty. Whereas this darker color, you won't see as much dirt as fast. And if you keep up with mopping and cleaning, um, it, it shouldn't change its shade. But stuff like this, this lighter color will eventually get super dirty and uh, it'll change the shade anyway. So good thing we messed up and bought the darker color and good thing we placed that down first before catching it because the darker color does appear to look better. So you could see the lines here, darker color, lighter color, and the grout. Um, it's personal preference, of course. You can see it there, you can see it there. So you can see the transition, the darker, the lighter. So if you're interested in the lighter color, this is what it would look like. And then if you're interested in the darker color, this is what it will look like in the transitioning. Keep in mind, a lot of this stuff looks a lot more tan than a, a cement color. So since I messed up on the colors and we decided to go with the darker color, this lighter color is gonna have to be removed. And uh, so if, you're, if you have your own tile, uh, say, and, and you didn't like the grout or the grout got dirty and you wanna switch it, 
Uh, there's a few options to get your grout out. They have a grout tool that's handheld that you slide and you cut through the lines. You have one that goes on an oscillating tool, uh, which is the one I'm gonna show you how to use. And then they also have like a scribe. Uh, it's like a carbide triangle that you take, dig in, and you scribe. The, the issue with the handheld tools, the ones that you gotta move uh, manually, is sometimes they wanna dig into the grout or if you get a little bit lower than the grout and you hit some of the mortar, uh, your, your grout tool won't move anymore. Um, so it's kind of a pain in the ass. So I recommend getting the oscillating uh, blade, which I'll show you how that's done. Uh, but that's gonna help me knock out all this real fast because you don't wanna grout over the current grout that you have, it's not gonna stick. To remove the grout, uh, what I ended up buying is this diamond bit. Uh, I bought a kit, it's from Easy Arc. Uh, the reason why I chose to buy these is because I've seen uh, a tool review on these where they're actually comparing a few different brands on Amazon and this one seemed to get the best life out of uh, the price for it. Okay, so it tells you everything it does, the different blades that they have. And then when you open it up, there was a divider in here which I took out and uh, just tossed away. But they got different blades and then you have, of course, this diamond blade and then you have a diamond blade like a, like a sander uh, style setup. So if you need to uh, maybe take the grout off the floor, you could do that with this. And then you have your half, your little half films here for wood, metal. You have bimetal blades. You have different ones. Uh, for thirty bucks, I mean, it's a great assortment. And at least I made sure that this brand's going to hold up uh, for the value. Because there's a lot of brands out there that, you know, the end of the metal here will start dulling uh, after a few uses. Uh, they also compared it to the Milwaukee and the Milwaukee actually start dulling pretty quick compared to the Easy Art. So uh, take it for what it's worth. I mean, do your own research. But I mean, for the cost or, or the price of it, it's worth a try. And uh, let's see how well this works on grout to see if this is even worth buying. All right, so I got this set to 12. I already start cutting into it. And it doesn't take a lot out, but it does take it out. Uh, and one of the reasons why is it's not super dry. So, I mean, it's only been maybe a day. So this is kind of soft. So it's kind of caking up on the blade, but just to show you how this works, turn it on. As you can see, it just pulls out uh, the grout. I mean, it's better than using a hand scraper. It's gonna take a little bit of time, but it, it does work. And it's probably the most efficient method you could get unless you got specialty tools. Um, I mean, this is way better than doing it by hand where you're sitting there scraping it. And removing the grout, uh, you don't have to remove it all. You just need a trough of some sort something deep enough for the new grout to kind of fill in uh, because if you grout over the top as soon as you sponge what's going to end up happening is that uh, that first layer that you put over it is going to lift right off and that's why you need uh, some type of trough i do recommend going in at an angle like this as you push just so that way you can make one pass and cut through uh, the width of the of the grout line so something like this this is dramatic but uh, it would be used in this manner but of course it's going to be less of an angle okay so one thing I found out when using this is by pulling it towards you and pushing it uh, instead of just letting it vibrate it'll actually dig into the grout a lot faster also if you die uh, if your batteries die when you're doing this what you can do is you could saw it so you could use it the same way as you were to uh, use the hand uh, one, except you got a lot more leverage because it's, you know, ergonomically fit for your hand. Uh, 
Um, one thing I do recommend though is even, even moving it manually, make sure you angle it slightly just so that way you have uh, more that you're, um, more of the grout you're scraping at once with this because it gets caked on. Uh, I tried a burr in a drill. It was like a, a V-shaped burr and that actually worked pretty good. But the one thing I found worked the best is a common drill bit um, and it doesn't cost you anything. So basically what I got is a quarter inch drill bit And then I ran it all the way down like such, and that cleans out everything for you. Uh, what I recommend doing, see, that's all loose. What I recommend doing is maybe going a uh, size smaller than whatever your grout lines are, just because you're gonna have some variance in, uh, in uh, the grout, uh, grout line widths. Uh, so if you go exactly a quarter inch, it's gonna start uh, riding on the tile a little bit and you could potentially chip your tile if you're not careful. So as you can see, that worked a lot faster. Uh, I just made one pass and it just tore it up. And I have it in uh, forward. We could try it in reverse. So reverse works as well, but not as uh, good as forward just because you're not using the teeth to dig into it. Uh, it might ruin your drill bit uh, just because you're you know, uh, drilling into a sand structure. So keep that in mind. Um, so use the cheaper bits just so you don't destroy them. So another thing I did was I took a uh, wood screw here, if you don't have a drill bit, and I uh, knocked off the head of it. So the head that would have a Phillips, I knocked that off, cut it, put it in the drill. And basically you drill into the, uh, the ground. So as you can see, it dug in, it drills right into it. And it moves, removes your grout all in one piece. After using the tool, um, this is what it looks like uh, when the grout got removed. It looks super dirty, but it's not all that. The black spot is actually uh, the tan tile, so it's not dirt. But if you look closely, it's a V-shape. So it just created a trough for uh, the grout to be reinserted. Okay, this is from uh, the mortar so that could get knocked off. And then after applying it, this is what it looks like. So after applying the first layer of it. And then as we make our way down this way, this is smoothing it out. So this is what it should look like uh, once water is applied to it again. And you can see the difference between this side and this side. That's going to complete today's video on the grout installation. Um, if you haven't seen my previous videos in regards to how to install the floor, uh, definitely take a look at those. Uh, they'll give you some good insight before you purchase your supplies or before you actually tackle the project and uh, gauge as much, to, uh, gauge the time it's going to take you to get the project done. So you're not working in a construction zone. Uh, you could uh, a lot for the time you need to do a room about this size, that size, and then the bathroom. You can kind of break it down based on how many tiles are here. So if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. It's greatly appreciated. If you want to see content like this and other content I'll be posting in the near future, consider subscribing and staying tuned for that because we got plenty of that coming. Uh, until next time, I'll see y'all in the next one. Thanks for watching.